Hi class, it's Bill Berry back with the second video in our Week 1A Java 2 series. We started in the last video looking at some design documents. We started on our mini project and we created a class diagram. Just to remind you, it looked like this. Right? A UML class diagram of our bank account problem. Remember the spec looked like this. So pause if you want to review that, otherwise we'll move on. So notice, uh, I will leave you with this slide while I talk for a second. You can find Violet at that location and, uh, and you'll remember that you're going to submit both of these kinds of documents. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a different kind of document and that's going to be a design document, or sorry, an object diagram, right? So this is our UML class diagram. We're also going to want to create an object diagram. So I'm going to do File New, it's going to be Static View, and I'm going to create an object diagram. Now, what is the point of an object diagram versus a class diagram? Well, the class diagram gives us a really nice overview of how the objects are going to work together. It lists the data and it lists the methods. So it's sort of a checklist of what you need to do and a visualization of how the relationships work. That's great. So what else do we want to do though? Well, an object diagram gives us a different view of the system and that is understanding how the things are going to be in memory, right? How are we going to, uh, to show how these things are going to look? So often that's going to help us when it comes to complex projects when we're navigating things, right? So we're going to take that and we're going, to, uh, we're going to get started. So one thing that I would recommend when you're doing an object diagram is start with main. So I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to deposit a couple of a couple of things, right? We may need more later, but I'm just going to sort of deposit a couple of objects because we know we're going to need them. I'm going to double click this first one and notice the only thing that goes here is going to be the name. And then we, you probably have a pretty good idea that the next object in the, that's going to be important here is going to be the bank. So let's start with that. So when we do this, I start with main because that sort of shows, shows you the whole thing and if you're writing code in main, it gives you an idea how to navigate through that whole thing. So in main, I'm probably going to declare a variable, right? So in an object diagram, what you're going to do is you're going to want field. So I'm going to come over here to the diagram tools, I'm going to click field, and I'm going to just click on the name of it. Now, notice where you click makes a difference because uh, it will add a new field right below wherever you click. So if you need to add one in the middle, you can do that by carefully clicking. I'm going to go back to select and notice uh, here I get to put in the name of the variable, in this case my bank, test bank, bank one, whatever you want to do, and the value I'm not going to do anything with here. Now typically when you make an object diagram, again you're sort of picturing what's going on in memory. So when you see this value over here, if this were a primitive value, right, if this were one of the eight primitives in Java, I would put in a value like you know, 3,867, whatever. So often if it's a primitive, you're just going to, you're going to put it in the box, right? But if it's not a primitive, you're not going to do that, right? So we're just going to leave whatever's there. It doesn't actually matter. When it's not a primitive, which is not here, we're going to use a thing called an object reference in this diagram. And what we're going to do is we're going to click from here to the middle of the name of the class that it's going to refer to. And that's going to create a nice little arrow for us. So in an object diagram, anytime you're referring to something that is not a primitive, you always want to put an arrow, and that arrow points at the object. And notice the title of the each of the objects is going to be a class name. Right? The title is going to be main, the title is going to be bank, etc. Right, so uh, get that one. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense. If you haven't drawn these, get used to them because you're going to be drawing some. And again, they're good visualizations so you have a picture of what's going on in memory and they will also help you write your code because you, you'll be able to traverse these things and understand where you are and what you need to type to move to the next thing. What does a bank have in it? Now, what we're trying to do is capture an interesting moment in time. And what's an interesting moment here? Well, after you've created your bank and you've added some bank accounts, right? We want to sort of have a full picture of what it looks like when the bank has been populated with accounts. That's a good moment in time to sort of take this snapshot. So let's go back and look. What does the bank have in it? It has accounts and it has an interest rate. Well, interest rate's easy. I'm going to do field over here and I'm going to click this a couple of times. Go back to select. This one's easy, right? I can just say this is the interest rate and the value here. Now this is going to be an actual 
primitive, right? So we're just going to type a number there. Oops, sorry, you didn't see that because it was off screen. So that's what I typed in there. Now, what else is going to be here? It's going to be a list of accounts, right? So this is going to be accounts, but what is that going to be? Hmm, well, that's not a primitive, right? So we're going to leave that alone for the moment. Uh, but what is that thing going to point at? Is that going to point to a bank account? Should I, should I type this here and put bank account and join that? Right? Is that a direct relationship there? Well, no, it's it's not. We we don't have that object yet. We've got something in between. Look at our class diagram again. Right here, we have the accounts. The accounts is an array list of bank accounts. So accounts doesn't point to an individual bank account. It points to something else, and that something else is going to be an array list. And then you can do you can actually wrap this right of bank account objects. All right. Now, each one of those certainly is going to point at one of these. Now, for the moment, we don't know or particularly care about uh, how the internals of an array list works. Like, we don't have to go in there and figure out all of, of the internals. Uh, we know that at the heart of it, an array list is based on an array, right? And we're going to explore that more soon. Uh, so we can really treat it as if it's an array. So I would recommend for the purposes of documentation, just do that. So what I would do is I would go grab the field button here, the field tool, and I'm going to click several times. Boom, 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 right? So I'm just going to uh, put a couple of those things. And then what I'm going to do here is instead of naming those things, because in an array you don't have names, you really just have numbers. So I'm going to put 0 in that one, and I'm going to put 1 in this one, and 2 in the next one. All right? And then each one of those is going to point to a bank account, right? So I'll do my object connector and I'll say, ah, object zero. Now notice I'm clicking, I'm dragging from here to the middle of the title, right? That's how to do that correctly. So now I can understand that and I'm going to fill in a couple of actual bank accounts and then this one, I'm just going to do this. Not sure this is real UML, but this works for me where I say, look, I'm just going to show you a couple of these. I'm going to give you the flavor and then I'm going to stop. Right? I don't have to show you a million of these. I'm just giving you the flavor. So a couple of them is great. Let's go make our first bank account and let's put the data in. Well, we go look at our class diagram. One, two, three fields. So I can go one, two, three clicks. What's going to be in here? Well, as you can probably guess, we're going to have the owner and that's going to be Pat. Eh. Right, that's going to be Wally Wong. The ID is going to be I don't know. Again, go grab these things off here, right? You have account ID, owner, and balance. So I guess let's be let's be uh, consistent here. Account ID. All right, and then we have the balance, and the balance is going to be make up a balance for Wally. Doesn't matter. Okay, there we go. So now we have a full bank account. Now to make it easier to type the next one, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Right. I'm going to Control C. I'm going to click away. I'm going to Control V. Now I've got a second bank account, and now I can go make a couple of changes to fill in the next one. I won't make you watch through that, but I'll pause and then resume. Okay, so now I've made a second bank account. I can grab the object reference guy and I'm going to click from here to the title, the middle of the title, and then I can certainly arrange these as I see fit. Sometimes I know you know that they're all going to point to the same thing, so if you're trying to show a number of them, it's okay if you obscure one a little bit because it's kind of obvious that you're just you're just showing them how a couple of them work. And the only other thing we need is we forgot an object reference from here to here. Right, and then I'll go back. And this would be a good time to save our work. Now, do you see why this is a useful diagram in addition to the other? It tells something different. It tells you, for instance, that when you're in main, you could practically write this code for how you would get from main if you wanted to find Sally's balance. Right? You could say from main, my bank dot accounts dot since it's an array list, get one dot get balance. 
right? So you can almost write code off of these things because this helps you navigate and know where you are in the picture and whether you need to type brackets, which of course in an array list you don't, or use a get method, which is typical. So the code gets easier to write and you've got a good mental picture. If you've messed this up, if you don't have this complete and you forget the fact that this is an array list, you might struggle down the line. The other thing is you're going to submit these two diagrams and you and I are going to have a conversation about them and I'm going to help you clear up anything that I see here isn't quite right so that you don't spend time coding in the wrong direction. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So these are the two typical kinds of diagrams, UML class diagrams, UML object diagrams. You don't have to use uh, this particular tool. I don't care. You can turn them in as long as I can read them, right? As long as I can read the things. So that's the, uh, the two diagrams that you're going to turn in, right? and then uh, that's, a, that's a great start for us. Now I'm going to pause this video, stop this video because it's over 10 minutes and this is a good stopping point. Uh, we, will, uh, we will get back to some other steps here, but I just wanted to start there and then certainly we want to flesh out the code for these things, but now that we have written our object diagram and class diagram, the code for this stuff should be pretty darn easy. So let's pause there, stop there, watch the next video as we'll continue to flesh out this problem and uh, write the code uh, the object-oriented uh, code for this. Thanks for watching.